Hey folks, welcome back to the Lone Pine Tarot. For today's pick a card reading, we have a bit of a special method of receiving our message for today. As you can tell by the title down below, it says a secret message from a secret sender. So what's going to happen is, is after you pick your piles today, my lovely viewers, during your reading, I'm going to take out my meteorite bowl. And I have different slips of paper inside this meteorite bowl. And each slip of paper has a certain source that a message could come from. So it could be an angel, it could be spirit guides, it could be the universe slash spirit, could be star beings, nature spirits, bunch of different ones in here. And then I'm going to pick your decks during the reading based on who came forward for you, who wants to speak to you for your highest good the most at the moment that you view this video. Okay? So a little bit of exciting, a little bit of a grab bag, a little bit of a mystery, some secretive aspects to this reading. So without further ado, let's pick our piles for today. For my lovely pile number ones, over here on the left, I have Delight. For my pile number twos in the middle, I have Adventures. And for my pile number threes on the right, we have Embracing. So just to reiterate, Pile 1's Delight, Pile 2's Adventures, and Pile 3's Embracing. Feel free, as always, to meditate on these cards. See which one calls the most to you. I always recommend going with what your first gut instinct was. Then, whenever you are ready, after you've meditated on the piles, drop down to the description box and or the top pin comment below the video. Click on the timestamp for your reading, and I will see you in our discussion about your secret message from a secret sender. We'll see who wants to speak to you guys today. All right? Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number ones. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of a secret message from a secret sender. As you recall, the card used to pick your pile today was Delight with the songbird in the field of flowers. Gorgeous card. And like I described in the intro, the very first thing we're going to do with your reading today is figure out who wants to reach out to you. So let's get ready. I'm going to pick up my meteorite bowl here and we're going to go through and we're going to pick a slip at random. We'll see who wants to talk to you. Universe, spirit. Oh, okay. Well, that one fell out. We're going to choose that one today. Okay. I didn't even finish the question. <laughs> Seems like we're eager to speak to pile number ones. All right, pile number ones. Let's reveal who wants to speak to you. You have spirit guides for today. Lovely. So it's your spirit guides, or at least one of them that wants to speak to you. So we're going to set that at the top here. Just so we remember who is sending the message to us, spirit guides. I'm going to set your pile leader over here to the left, like always. And excuse the pause, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to grab decks that are specific, or I think would be the best for bringing forward the message from your spirit guides today. I'm going to pick intuitively one second as I turn around. Okay, definitely that one. Let's see here. For sure that one. And hmm. It's always hard picking decks, isn't it? Spirit guides. Let's see here. I always like the Lantern Oracle. I feel like that's a good one. Let's see. So one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to do a Surrender card. That's a good deck for that. And, hmm. We're going to do Nature's Whispers as well for you. I'm actually going to take that back. How about instead of Nature's Whispers, we do... Sacred Rebels. Perfect. And as for your tarot deck today, pile number ones, we're going to pick... I feel... an inclination towards Tarot of the Divine. That's what I'm being told today. So, we're going to actually pick your cards on camera today. I know I usually do the tarot decks, or at least the tarot cards, but we're going to do all of them today. So, and I also am intuitively being told to split your reading into two different sections, like I typically do pile number ones. So, once again, bear with me as I draw your cards here. So we have Sacred Rebels. This is going to be in the 
second section of your reading. Okay, so I'm going to split the cards that way. Spirit guides for pile number ones. Can you tell me what would you like to give to them in the second section of this reading with this particular deck? This is going to be the advice section. Could you give them some advice? I know we haven't drawn the cards for the first section yet, but time doesn't really matter to spirit guides, so <laughs> they know what's up. All right, so we're going to pull this one here. Lovely. Put the deck away. Over here. Yes, this is unique. I've never done a reading like this before. So feel free to drop down in the comments below if you like this type of reading or you think it's too lengthy or complicated. Maybe you like the thrill of it being a mystery. All right, same thing. Spirit Guides, Power of Surrender card, please, for pile number ones. This will also be in the advice section of this reading, depending on what you want to talk to them about. Thank you. One card, please. Okay, that one for sure is calling our name. Okay. This is kind of fun, actually. I usually don't draw the Oracle cards on the screen because I typically like to save time that way. But, all right, and then... We have your Lantern Oracle. This will be in the first section of the reading. Spirit Guides of Pile Number Ones for the Lantern Oracle. Can you talk to me more about the issue at hand here? I'm going to shuffle this here. Oopsie. That wasn't a very good shuffle here. I'll shuffle it this way. Apologies, Spirit Guides. I have butter hands. <laughs> the issue at hand, please. Thank you. That one right there. Okay, and then same thing with these two deck spirit guides. Can you talk to me about the issue at hand or even maybe a little bit of advice, especially with the Healing Spirits Oracle? There we go. It's a little hard to shuffle midair, but one card, please. Thank you, spirit guides of Pile Ones. We step forward today. So this is what I do off camera most of the time before I record. But I don't know, sometimes people like to view uh, the process of drawing cards. I guess it just depends on preference. But And then same thing with the Dream Ritual Oracle. What's going on that you would like to speak to them about? Spirit Guides of Pile number ones. Okay, there we go. I'm a bad shuffler today. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. One card, please. Thanks. What's going on in their lives? What do you want to talk to them about? That one right there. Lovely. And I'm going to pull out your tarot deck. Take out the guidebook. Don't need that. There's the deck. Tarot of the Divine is a lovely deck. It has a lot of mythological figures in it. We're going to do a nice shuffle shuffle. Just a pre-shuffle. See, what is it with my shuffling today? It's just very poor. We're going to try that again. All right, are you ready? It's going to work this time. There we go. Except your spirit guide paper fell off the table <laughs> from the airflow. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, you remember it was spirit guides that were talking to you today, so. Okay, let's put your cards into two different sections here. So this will be the, or these will be the cards of the first section. So we're going to talk about those first, and these are more the advice cards from your spirit guides on what to do about the situation at hand. Okay, spirit guides of pile number ones. Could you give me five tarot cards explaining more about the situation at hand that you want to talk to them about? What's going on in their lives that they need help with? For their highest, best, good. Five cards, please. Thank you. Now this part you typically see on camera is the tarot part. Let's see, three, four, and that one right there, five. Lovely. All right, all the ducks are in a row, as I like to say. Let us reveal your cards, pile number ones. What do your spirit guides want to talk to you about? Your dream ritual oracle for today is immerse. Being immersed in something basking in something, being caught up in something. We'll see what else pops out as context. 
I'll put that one right there. A little bit higher, maybe. There we go. Your Healing Spirits Oracle. Natural healing power. Something about the healing power of nature. Finding alternatives for healing ourselves. Beautiful. Maybe they're telling you to get more in spirit with or excuse me, get more in touch with, like, natural spirits. Could be that they're telling you to get more in touch with the healing power of natural remedies. Of course, always talk to your doctor, but we'll see what else pops out. Your Lantern Oracle is number 24, emptied. The ending and beginning lie at either side of the same door. Interesting. Ending and beginning lie at either side of the same door. Alrighty. We're going to shift these around just a little bit more. And your tarot cards. First up, we have the Four of Cups reversed. Finding interest in something, losing apathy, and being more optimistic. Also, there's a lot of birds in the readings today. I don't know if you noticed this in the intro, but all the uh, cards for people to pick their piles from had a bird in them, including yours, pile number ones. A lot of birds. We'll see what else pops out. Number two, the Seven of Swords. Trickery, something being deceitful afoot. We have the coyote from Native American myth. Or belief, I should say. Next up, we have the Five of Cups reversed. La Llorona, we have recovering from a time of grief. Number four, we have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. Feeling like we lack internal security in some area especially in the material world, as pentacles or coins are the earth suit. And last but not least, we have the Ten of Cups, happily ever after, emotional fulfillment. Lovely. So what do your spirit guides want to talk to you about? Let's see. Let's get our ducks in a row, as I always like to cornily say. So pile number ones, immerse, natural healing power, delight. Empty it. I'm going to take a sip as I look over your cards. Apologies for silence or a pause here. So right off the bat already, I'm getting intuitively, there is something that happened recently in your life pile, number ones, where there was a great sadness of some sort. I am saying that because not only do you have the five of cups reversed, and typically that's the card meaning overcoming a time of grief, you're moving on from sadness. You also have emptied, and it says the end and beginning lie at either side of the same door. So it's like you're at the cusp of something just ended and now something is beginning. That's what your spirit guides want to talk to you about. And I think intuitively I'm also being told you are seeking happiness again. You are seeking that 10 of cups of happily ever after. You're like, I wish I had that happily ever after with this situation before that I'm recovering from, hence the five of cups reversed, right? Also, the fact that you pick delight as your pile leader is like, it symbolizes to me intuitively that you're someone seeking delight. You're someone looking for a happy spring meadow after a time of winter. Let's just use the seasons as a metaphorical example. You're looking for hope. You're looking for the robin singing in the spring, heralding and telling you, hey, something better is coming, at least in terms of growth, in terms of new life, in terms of rebirth in some area of your life. And so... What your spirit guides want to talk to you about is the recovery from this time of sadness. I think if I had to put a pin in it, now I know everyone's going to be different. This is a general reading. If I had to put a pin in it, though, there was some cause of this sadness that had to do with deceit or trickery and someone being apathetic here especially with the Four of Cups reversed being the first card next to the Seven of Swords. The Four of Cups upright is typically like not paying enough attention to something, or it can also mean apathy. It can mean being apathetic about things. Reversed, it's overcoming that apathy. And then the Seven of Swords, like I said when I pulled it out, is the card of deceit. It's the card of trickery, someone getting away with something. I don't know if it was a relationship that didn't work out, pile number ones. Um, either it broke because of apathy or someone realizing that, hey, this isn't right for me, you know, or it broke because of deceit. It could have also been a job that you moved away from, a career you moved away from, where some situation where trickery was afoot and you just, your heart wasn't in it anymore or someone's heart wasn't in it anymore. And so 
you're like, well, I'm sad. I have to move on from this particular situation or relationship or thing. Whatever it is for you, pile number ones. But I'm still in this drudgery of the sadness. I'm still looking for that happily ever after at the end here with the Ten of Cups. And especially with the Queen of Pentacles reversed, whatever it was, it almost feels like it was something that threatened your security in terms of um, the material world. Because like I said, Pentacles are Earth. Pentacles are the suit of the things around us. Oftentimes that means our career. Oftentimes that means money. It can also mean our home. It can also mean our body. I, I like to interpret Pentacles also as our body. You know, man made of clay, earth. We're made of earth stuff, right? Or I should say star stuff technically originally, but <laughs> star stuff that accumulated on the planet, right? Our body, our home, our career, our money. It threatened the security of your money and that's why, or the security of your body, the security of everything around you could even be your home, like I said, and that's what you're recovering from right now. Trying to get that Queen of Pentacles back to an upright, or at least that's what your spirit guides are telling you, pile number ones. That's what they want you to focus on right now, because that will bring you to that happily ever after that you're looking for, all right? Now, they do have some advice already. They do have natural healing power here. I know we're not quite at the advice section of this reading yet, but natural healing power is a card of looking towards the outdoors, looking towards nature, looking towards natural remedies to heal ourselves. Now, I'm not a doctor. I'm never going to tell you go completely with alternative medicine over mainstream, you know, scientific or not. I shouldn't even say scientific because it's not even always that. But um, I'm not going to tell you to pick alternative medicine over traditional medicine. All right. Or doctor prescribed medicine, I guess is how I should put it, because alternative medicine often is the traditional medicine. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm getting word salad here. But if you have been in a time of sadness, pile number once, if you've been in a time of sorrow, if you've been in a time of hurt, look towards nature to help you. All right? look towards, say, let's say you're depressed. And typically when you go to a traditional doctor, they would be like, well, here's a pill to take care of it. Heed your doctor's advice. I'm never going to tell you not to do that. But also alternatively, look into things like nature therapy. Look into things like, what's a good example? Like hiking, walking out in nature. Letting nature heal you in a way that traditional medicines cannot. That's one piece of advice they have for you in recovering from this time of sadness pile number ones. Like I said, I'm not going to necessarily recommend certain alternative medicines, but you might want to look into that, especially if you're finding that like a mainstream medicine is not working for you in terms of helping you in this area pile number ones. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that, of course. You decide that. I'm never going to give health advice on my channel, but natural healing power is a pretty telling card to receive in this area. So look into things like that. Heed your doctor's advice, but also look into other things. That's all I'm going to say on that. All right. And then we also have a Immerse. Now, Immerse is a card of we have someone opening a storybook here. There are things growing from the pages. We have a dock and a boat in the water. Immerse is all about, kind of like what it says on the tin, throwing ourselves into something. I think that's also a piece of advice from spirit, or your spirit guides, I should say, that either recently you've been immersing yourself in a lot of things, maybe to help recover from this grief. Perhaps there's a hobby that you've been looking into that's, you know, maybe therapeutic art, music. Those things are fantastic. Hiking, like I said, nat natural he healing power. Fantastic for recovering from times of sadness or loss. If not, though, that is a piece of advice for, to you from your spirit guides, pile number ones. Immerse yourself more. Specifically, I could see maybe a reading is a really good idea for you or writing because you did get a book. However, there are a lot of natural elements here, too. Specifically, we have a dock with a boat next to it, something to do with water. All right. We have a lot of water elements, actually, in your cards I'm seeing here. We have not only water in your Immerse card, you also have the La Llorona here in the Five of Cups Reverse is standing in a pool of water. We also have these figures in the Ten of Cups in the foreground standing in water. We also have your Lantern Oracle here 
is right next to water. There's something to do with natural healing with water I would recommend for you. I don't know if that might be fishing. I don't know if that might be swimming. Uh, swimming is also just a fantastic exercise for your body. It's very gentle on your limbs. So especially for those of you perhaps that suffer from, let's say, arthritis, that is a fantastic uh, exercise for you. Maybe, you know, an exercise too is also a great way to uh, help regulate our emotions and feel better because it releases hormones that reduce, I believe, correct me, anyone in the comments if I'm wrong, but I believe it reduces cortisol, which is the stress hormone. Pile number ones. Look into water things. Hike by water. Yeah, if you're getting into a hobby, try watercolor. Keep that in mind. Also look for synchronicities related to water. Let's see if there's any other messages here about this time of sadness before I move on to the full advice section. I know we did cover some advice already with these cards, but... Also, I'm getting an intuitive message. Don't feel guilty about, during this time of sadness, immersing yourselves in distractions. You know, oftentimes in society, we shame ourselves a lot for being distracted. We shame ourselves for taking time to watch a TV show. We shame ourselves for taking time to read or play video games or insert entertainment thing here. But there's no shame in actually distracting ourselves once in a while. All things in moderation, of course. We have to be moderate with things. We can't in indulge too much, but... You know, all work and no play makes Jane a dull girl as well, or John a dull boy, we should say. So that's the thing, pile number ones. If you find yourself immersing yourself a little bit more in entertainment right now, maybe different worlds like reading, writing, video games, watching TV shows or movies, do not feel guilty for that. Because a lot of times, too, I have found that the things we're drawn to to immerse ourselves in, even as a distraction, even if it's not, you know, the whole, you know, we need to be productive 24-7 idea that a lot of Western society has. I think even the whole world necessarily, not just Western society. I feel like, though, sometimes we're drawn to the things we're drawn to because there's something in those mediums that has a lesson for us that's important for us to hear at the time that we're experiencing that entertainment piece. So keep that in mind. If you ever do feel guilty for maybe, you know, indulging a little bit more in distractions during this time of sadness, there's something to be derived from the thing that you're indulging in that's important for this period of growth for you after the time of sadness. All right, so let's move on to the advice section of your reading course. <laughs> advice always kind of comes out as it comes out. We did have some here already, but I did specifically pull cards for advice for you. There we go. Good shuffle this time. Yeah, the beginning and ending lie at either side of the same door. That too, you're also just on the cusp of something new, pile number once. I feel like if you felt stagnant recently, this is a time of, like, you're just at the... the the threshold of the doorway onto something new and better. So if you've been worried about like, oh, is things, are things going to change? Am I going to recover from this time of sadness? That's what your spirit guides are saying. You're just at that cost. So uh, spirit guides for my lovely pile number ones. Can you give me five cards explaining advice for them in this area? What else would you give them for advice on recovering from the time of sadness or loss? Whatever it is that's been ailing them in their life recently. I mean, earlier we did talk about water exercise. We talked about natural remedies. We talked about indulging in distraction just a little bit all things in moderation of course but we're not robots we're not production machines we're human beings so it is okay to take a rest every once in a while it's okay to indulge a little bit thank you spirit guides let's reveal the oracle cards for your surrender cards surrender to non-action you know this card does come up a lot in my readings for you guys on this channel now is the time to be still and not act simply breathe and focus on your own power let others come to you pile number ones what was i just saying it's okay to take time off. It's okay to indulge. It's okay to not be a productive human being 24-7. It's okay to watch a TV show on a Saturday instead of getting something done that you could get done the next weekend, especially if you are suffering from sadness. You know, it's okay to heal a little bit. Take a self-care day. Uh, you know, I know money is tight for a lot of people right now, but if you do have the money, like have a spa day or, you know, take a day off and go to a park and walk around for free. Things like that. 
surrender to non-action. You don't have to be productive all the time. You don't have to be perfect all the time. You can just let things come to you and you can take time to rest and self-care. Now is the time to be still and not act. Let others come to you. Breathe and focus on your own power. So that was that message. We also have your sacred rebels. You received trust yourself. Number 31. Trust yourself. Once again, lots of birds, but of course we have other animals as well. Um, I also think maybe animal therapy could help. I know I've heard of therapists that have, I believe it's horses I've heard of. They have horses. Working with horses is a form of therapy. Uh, I don't know if there's any other animals out there that are involved in therapeutic methods like that. Uh, lots of animals, though. Maybe working with animals, volunteering for a shelter could also be a good piece of advice for you, pile number ones. In recovering from this time of sadness, maybe even fostering animals, foster dogs, foster cats, if you're available and you have the time and the effort and the money for that available, things like that. But yes, the meaning, though, of trust yourself is literally just trust yourself. Wherever you go in life right now during this time of recovery, trust that you know where you're going and that every action you take is the right step. I feel like maybe because after this time of sadness, there's been a lot of self-doubt in you, pile number ones. But your spirit guides are saying, just trust yourself. You know the way. There we go. And then I'm also going to... Well, this is awkward. <laughs> I don't have the equal distribution of cards here. Well, that's okay. Nothing's perfect, right? First up, you have the Queen of Pentacles reversed again. And you did watch me shuffle that. So she did come out again. Piece of advice there. Work on activities that increase your internal feeling of security. All right. Number two, we have the Four of Swords. That's the card of rest. You're getting many, many cards telling you to rest and not be so active in terms of... Especially your mind is what I'm telling, or I'm being told. Your mind, a lot of anxiety, especially with the swords or the uh, element of air, which is the mind in tarot. Rest. You're getting a big flashing neon sign. Rest. Self-care. All right, King of Pentacles Reverse. That is the card of, it's similar to the Queen, but it's more external than internal. Work on external manifestation. Bringing forth into the material world. Interesting, we'll see what else pops out before I comment on that too much further. You have another Swords, a new idea, Ace of Swords, new idea, inspiration. Um, I feel like this is a really fertile time for you, pile number ones, for creative projects too. If you're a creative person, it's a very exploratory time. Yeah. And then the Eight of Wands is the card of speed. The card of speed. I'm going to actually put that one up here. Um, Eight of Wands is about things happening quickly. So like I said, you're right on the cusp. You're on that threshold. Your spirit guides are reassuring you that pile number ones. You're almost there to a time of recovery from whatever the sadness was. If you've been kind of down in the dumps lately, just be reassured. But in the meantime, yes, it's a fertile ground for new ideas. If you have a new idea, go with it. Like, let's say one day you wake up and you say, hey, I want to go hiking today. Or, hey, I want to paint today. I want to do, or I want to go swimming. I want to go fishing. Insert thing here. Or I want to watch a movie. Go to the movie theater or watch one at home. That's an old favorite. Do it. Follow your gut right now. And really emphasized here is rest. You need rest. You don't have to be productive all the time, pile number ones. You don't have to be a machine that, you know, you don't have to wake up and produce all day and then go to sleep and then that's your life. You can do things that are enjoyable. You're here to enjoy life. You're here to love. You're here to love yourself as well. That's another message coming through. Here your spirit guides are saying. Yep, and then especially with the emphasis on the Queen of Coins and the King of Coins, um, I believe this could be, because it is the Earth suit, like I said earlier, maybe an emphasis on the material world, aka like your home, your job, money, things like that. I would say, especially with the Ace of Swords upright, look into, if you can, finding ways to connect your passions with external manifestation. Of course, you know, don't take a hobby that you absolutely love and then turn it into a money-making thing if you know that it's going to make you hate doing that hobby. Sometimes that does happen. Um, some people are really good at things, but they don't want to turn it into a business because it would just take the joy out of creation, right? But I think for you, especially because of the coins coming out here reversed, look into that. And maybe you'll find that, uh, especially like maybe if it was a job you lost recently, 
that might be an avenue for a better job for you in the future that you actually enjoy more than you did the one before that perhaps you left or were let go of from. Find something that you enjoy and connect that to external manifestation in your life. Pile number one. So let's see if there's any other messages before I sign off with you. Yes, and just follow your delight. That's your North Star for right now. Your spirit guides are saying pile number ones. Follow your delight. Things are coming. The eight of wands means speed. It's coming down fast. You're at the threshold of moving on past this dark time. But in the meantime, yes, follow your heart. Trust yourself. Follow your delight. See where it takes you. And remember self-care. And you don't have to be active all the time. You don't have to be productive all the time. Even if you associate that with your self-worth, that could also be another thing, pile number ones. Don't associate your, your productivity with your self-worth. Like I said, we're not machines. We're human beings. All right, well, pile number ones, I hope that reading was helpful for you. Uh, that was a message from your spirit guides that came forward for you today. As always, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next reading. And remember, follow your delight pile number ones. Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number twos. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of a secret message from a secret sender. As you recall, the card used to pick your pile today was the card of adventures. We have, it looks like a, I don't know if that is a parrot or a toucan. I believe it's a parrot because of the beak in a rainforest here. Lovely card, beautiful. I would love to be right next to that waterfall right now, <laughs> wouldn't we all? And then, of course, as I described in the intro, we're going to see a little bit of a mystery. Who wants to speak to you today? So let's work on that right now, actually. I'll set your pile leader over here to the left. Who wants to speak for pile number two is today? Could whoever or whatever group of beings that want to speak to pile number two, could you come forward and help me pick the right slip of paper? Who wants to speak to them? All right, I believe that one right there. Let's see, who wants to talk to you today, pile number two? We have star beings. All right, so if you're not familiar with what that is or who they are, uh, this is associated with the starseed belief, beings in the universe that aren't quite human. Uh, we might even call them aliens sometimes. Uh, that are higher on the spiritual growth ladder, as I've heard it put before, than humans ourselves, typically. So, some of you might even be star seeds, pile number twos. But yeah, star beings are coming forward for you. So like I said in the intro, I'm going to pick your pile, or excuse me, your decks now. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of star seed, star being related decks. Uh, fortunately, there just aren't a lot out there. I wish more. Hey, card publishers, publish more star stuff. Anyways, <laughs> I doubt they watch my channel, but I'm going to turn around and apologies for some silence or wrestling. I'm going to pick your decks right now, pile number twos, all right? And then we're going to drop on screen. So what's a good star being? I feel like what's a good deck for them? Hmm. What would you guys like me to pick? Star being. I feel like, you know, it's a little fantastical, but I feel like the Shadowscapes is probably the best one that I have for this. So I'm going to pick Shadowscapes for the Star Beings today. And then let's see. Hmm, what advice do you have for them? What do you want to talk to them about? The Pile Twos. Uh, I know the Oracle of the Hidden Worlds is a little bit more like fey nature inspired but this is probably the closest i have to kind of the aesthetic of star being so we're gonna do the hidden world let's see here what else um you know what Okay. And then most of my decks I still have out from, let's see, we're going to do this. And these two, let's see, so one, two, three, four. And then the advice section, I always like to do a surrender card. And then we're going to pick 
healing spirits for the advice section. Definitely those two. I think that is it, though I might draw more. We'll see. Pile number two. So like I said, this reading is very avant-garde open-ended. So these will be advice cards. We'll pull those towards the end here in a bit. And these are going to be the situation at hand. So star beings for my lovely pile number twos. I'm hearing Andromeda. For those of you familiar with starseed systems, I believe Andromeda is Andromedans. Andromedans. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but <laughs> I'm being told. And Pleiadin. Like Pleiades. Andromeda and Pleiades. All right. So lovely beings from the stars. Could you give me an Elki oracle for lovely pile number two? Thank you. What would you want to talk to them about today? Who are they in this situation? Thank you. We have this one right here. Lovely. And actually, I'm going to weigh this down because pile number ones, when I was shuffling the cards, their little paper went flying. So we're going to have a nail file here that's sparkly and purple to hold that down. <laughs> oh, you probably all think I'm silly, but that's okay. I like silly. Silly makes the world happy. There we go. Same thing with the Dream Ritual Oracle for my lovely pile number two is star beings coming forward for them. What's going on? What do you want to talk to them about? Thank you. Oh boy. That's a lot. All right. I don't know if I can take three. I'm really sorry, star beings. Could you give me one or two, please? I'm going to shuffle again. One or two, please. I have limited desk space. There we go. Thank you. Oh, that was quick. Okay. So you got strength. So that one already kind of revealed itself. They're a lot more energetic than... Uh, pile number one's had spirit guides today. That was the one who came out for them. I feel like the spirit being... Or sorry, star beings are a bit more... They have a different energy, I guess is how I would put it. Same thing with this deck for pile number twos. A card for them, please. What's going on? What do you want to talk to them about? Thank you, star beings. That one right there. Thank you. And then there we go. And then I'm going to draw, just so we get the drawing part out of the way, I'm going to draw the cards for the second section of your reading right now. So spirit star beings for my lovely pile number two. Is, we haven't talked about the situation at hand yet, but could, in the future, could you give me some of the advice cards for them, please? Thank you. One of the healing spirits. Thank you. One, please. One or two, at most. All right. I feel like that one right there. Yes, I wish... I know there is the Starseed Oracle by... Uh, is her name Rebecca Campbell? I'm sorry if I butchered that, but... I want to get that oracle really bad. That would be perfect for this reading, but unfortunately I don't have that card deck, so. But yeah, in general, I wish they had more star being type oriented decks. I don't see a lot of them from the publishers, but maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. Same thing, star beings. One card, what should they surrender in the advice section? Thank you. Yeah, I wish they had more decks like that, but unfortunately they don't. There we go. That one right there. Okay. Thank you, star beings, coming forward for pile number twos. And like I said, I'm intuitively being told uh, Pleiades and Andromeda, for those of you familiar with starseed systems. So there we go. We'll talk about these later. These are the advice cards. We'll talk about these in a second, and then we're going to reveal your tarot cards. Starseed beings. Star beings for pile number two. Could you give me five tarot cards explaining the situation at hand for them? Thank you, five. Thank you. Let's see, one, two, three, 
four and five. Okay, pile number two. So now that's typically what I do off screen most of the time, but today because of the special aspect or nature of this reading, you got to see all the cards drawn. So let's reveal your oracle cards for the first section. What do they want to talk to you about? Your oracle of the hidden world is water, spirit, emotions, memory, life force. Interesting. I believe these are irises over here. Some lotus lilies. Emotions, memory, and life force. Fascinating. Um, strength already came out. A lot about water today, too. Uh, pile number one's had that as well. You also have the waterfall. Also a lot of birds. Yeah. Apologies for the loud motorcycles outside. It's a very nice day, and a lot of bikers like to uh, drive the route next to my house. So there we go. We're going to do this. And then your L key today is she who is wild, savage, untamed, wild, mysterious. All right, set her up here and revealing your tarot cards. Number one, we have the Eight of Pentacles being hard at work, like a spider weaving her web. Number two, we have the Knight of Cups taking action with our emotions. Number three, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, Ten of Pentacles can mean legacy, it can mean inheritance, success in the material world. Especially after a time of working hard, like the Eight of Pentacles. We have temperance, balance and moderation in all things, the balance of elements. And last but not least, we have the Eight of Swords reversed, releasing ourselves from our mental prisons. That's what that card means on the tin. Alright, so let me look over your cards here and put together a cohesive message from the star beings that came forward for you, the Pleiadans and Andromedans. One moment, pile number twos. Apologies for the silence or any drinking noises. I'm also taking a sip, though. Hmm. So pile number twos. I believe uh, intuitively what I am being told. There is some aspect of your life where you, I don't know if it's, if you like you've given up on something, but the best way I can describe it is like there was something you were seeking in your past and you let go of it. But you might be being encouraged to return to whatever that was, is how I'm going to summarize what's coming forward intuitively from these cards, from the star beings that are speaking to you. I believe the reason why you left it behind was because it was a time of chaos. It was a time of hardship. It was a time of taking risks. I don't know if it was a particular relationship that didn't work out. It could have been a business venture you tried. It could have been a certain career you tried. Something like that. Whatever it was, there is an element of exploration of taking adventures, like your pile leader you picked today, of having to brave stormy weather and stormy seas and having the strength to break through. But it's either that like you gave up because the going got too tough or you didn't believe in yourself enough. And that's why you gave up, even though you probably were strong enough to hold through. Does that make sense, pile number twos? That's what I'm intuitively being told from these cards. Especially because we have water spirit here. And water in cardomancy, tarot, oracle decks, etc. often means emotions, like it says here. Also memory and life force. Water is what gives us life here on Earth as humans. Um, water is also, you know, a marker in the universe for a planet that can host life, or at least life similar to us as humans, right? Because we're, well, we're carbon-based life forms, but we also need lots of water to survive. We're a water planet. 75% of our surface is water. Water is a necessary element of life. And so what I'm being told intuitively from that is it's almost like by giving up this thing, pile number two, is you gave up something that was necessary for your soul to sing. You gave up something that was necessary for 
your happiness. And the sense I'm getting is like, yes, things are more stable now. Things are more safe now that you've moved away from whatever this was. But there's a lack of spark because there's a lack of enthusiasm. There's a lack of, of life, so to speak, here. It's like I'm being shown, like, in comparison, you know, Mars compared to Earth, right? Mars actually is very similar to Earth. But what happened was, at least what was theorized, uh, currently theorized by astronomers, is that Mars lost its atmosphere. And by losing its atmosphere, it dried up. Like, if you go to Mars, I mean, you can't, but at least currently, if you go to Mars, there are ice caps. There is water there, technically. There are dry creek beds and, like, water beds, I, to my understanding. Last I've, I looked into the planet Mars, at least geologically, right? But it lost its protection from the universe and the elements, and so its atmosphere and the water dried up, and it's completely gone of what used to be there. That's what I feel like is you, pile number two, is you're like, you're like Mars. You used to be like, or at least in this area of your life, you used to be like Earth, and now things are a little bit dry, things are a little bit dusty, things are a little bit boring, so to speak. So, what the star beings are speaking to you about today is maybe, even if it's not exactly going back to the precise same thing, pile number two is, they're talking about finding something similar again that brings a spark to your life, that turns your life from dusty, dry Mars with maybe some water only in the coldest regions of the ice caps, right? <laughs> Back to Earth where things are lush and there's a lot of water and life. It's not so dead inside. I mean, maybe maybe that's kind of it. You've been feeling kind of dead inside. Maybe that's why emotions are, are coming up so so much and water too. Because like I said, in cartomancy, water is the element of emotions. You have emotions in your water spirit here. You also have the Knight of Cups, which is someone taking action on their emotions. If you've been feeling dead inside pile number twos, the star beings are saying that's part of your solution to fixing that. Finding also balance in your life. I said this to pile number ones, it could be a theme just collectively for everybody. All work and no play makes Jane a dull girl, or John a dull boy, whatever you prefer. Temperance is about moderation. Everything doesn't have to be nose to the grindstone, grinding yourself to ashes and dust, like the planet Mars. You can have emotion in your life, you can have fun in your life, you can have something that makes you get excited to get up out of bed and work every day. Or not work, but... You know, we're, we're not always excited to work. I just, <laughs> a little bit of a, of a lofty thing, but you know what I'm saying. Thing, a spark is a good example. Something that makes the dry creek beds run again out of this time of drought is kind of what I'm saying. So yes, if you've been feeling dead inside, that's what they're saying. Finding, refining that spark. And of course, we'll get into an advice section that'll talk more about like, how do we refine that spark? But at least already, the piece of advice I'm being told just with your first set of cards here, pile number two is, is finding something similar to the thing that you lost or gave up and following that North Star again. That's how I would put it. And being hard at work, and especially with the uh, abundance of pentacles here, pentacles are the suit of earth and tarot. Earth is what's around us, our bodies, our homes, our careers, our money, things like that, material things. I think for most of you this is related to a career. It doesn't have to be. But you did get an abundance of pentacles here as the majority element in your reading is a lot of earth. A lot of earth, a little bit of water. Uh, temperance is a balance of all things. And then swords here are air. Now the eight of swords too reversed is... Like I said, re releasing yourself from a mental prison. That's what I'm feeling intuitively from why you gave this up in the first place and why you're still stuck here in this time of a little bit of uh, dryness, so to speak. A lack of spark. Enthusiasm is another good word for that. Is because there's a mental prison you need to break out of, or at least you're being highly encouraged to break out of. And that mental prison pile number two is, is a lack of self-belief. A lack of courage to try. You have the card strength here, right? Remember? It's not easy sailing those stormy seas at all. That's probably why you gave it up in the first place. Things got a little bit stormy. And it gets scary. You know, especially if it's like a business. You know, you might be writing money on it. You might be, you know, writing your pride on it if it doesn't work out. But 
is safety really worth feeling dead inside? Is a good question to ask yourself that I'm being told to tell you. So that's the question you should ask yourself, pile number two. Let's get on to the advice section, like I said. Live your life a little bit more wild, like Savage here. Being untamed, wild, mysterious. We're going to shuffle these back into the deck so that all 78 are available. Oh, I shouldn't have taken it out of the box. Whoops. Look at me being disorganized. Uh-oh. You have to forgive me. Of course, always in the comments, if you like this kind of reading where you, more cards are drawn on screen and it's a little bit more grab bag as to who's coming forward, feel free to tell me. But Or if you don't like it, feel free to tell me. Be like, oh, this sucked. <laughs> I mean, be nice about it, of course, but... But yep, all work and no play makes Jane a dull girl. So... We have your cards from earlier here, the advice cards, and then I am going to shuffle a little bit more with this tarot deck. So star beings of my lovely pile number two who are coming forward to speak to them. Apparently majority Pleiades and Andromeda. Could you give me five cards, please, explaining more about the advice you have for them and breaking this deadness? Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, oh, well, there's one or two actually. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the reason why Mars is, and then let's see, one, two, three, four, five. The reason why Mars is dead, I believe it's its magnetosphere at lost, which protects it from the elements of the universe. And so it lost its atmosphere and then lost its water. Anyways, anyone that's an astronomer, feel free to correct me. I love astronomy, but I'm not a genius at it, so <laughs> I might be saying something wrong there, but... Anyways, you're learning some astronomy facts today. So you already saw two tarot cards, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let's reveal your oracle cards. Advice in this area for you, pile number twos. So we have surrender to complete healing. Open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. Yes, healing from this time of self-doubt. Healing from this time. And we have someone running into the water again. Look at that. She's running from the sandy, dusty beach into water. You might be like pile number ones, pile number twos, where water is a really heavily featured element of your reading. Look into activities that bring you closer to water is one suggestion I'm going to give you. I know that's not what the card means, but literally running into water from the sand. Mm -hmm. Running from a dry, dusty Mars into a lush earth, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe. Yes. Um. So there's a time of healing coming, pile number two. So there's top talking to you about that but a lot of what helps you heal is being open to healing being willing to let go of what happened in the past so that you can open doors to the future because it's possible that you maybe have already bypassed or are soon to pass something that would bring that spark back into your life but if you're not open to the change, that healing can't come in. You can't take a balm that you won't apply to yourself. So, is a good way to put that. So, surrender to complete healing. We'll talk about that more in a second with the other cards in conjunction. Your healing spirits is endurance is the key to success. You know, that's funny. I was just talking about the magnetosphere of Mars. You want to know why northern lights happen, pile number twos? Like, we just recently had a very vibrant Northern Lights storm, at least in North America. That's when the radiation of the universe, especially from the sun, hits the magnetosphere of the Earth. We have a lot about Northern Lights here. That might be a synchronicity for you. But yes, that's why the sky lights up. It's the magnetosphere being hit. Particles lighting up. Anyways, endurance is the key to success. That's what we were just talking about, pile number two, is with... Remember when I said I feel like you gave it up because you felt like storm... The, the seas were getting a bit too stormy, metaphorically speaking. You felt like maybe you weren't good enough for it. This new opportunity is a chance for you to break through that self-doubt that happened the first time and realize that you do have what it takes the second time. That's what they're telling you. Endurance is the key to success. Enduring this time. Also, is that water? Yeah, that looks like water down here. A lot of water. Okay. I'll, I'll shut up about water, but you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. A lot of synchronicities. 
All right, we already saw these two. We'll talk about them in a second. But first tarot card is the Knight of Wands taking action with our passions. Yep, that's kind of what I already said. They're encouraging you. Take action on what drives you. Do not be afraid of fire in your life, which is what the wand suit is, is the element of fire. Passions, willpower, creativity. Follow those things, pile number twos. Card number two is the Four of Pentacles reversed. Uh, typically upright, it's about withholding. Four of Pentacles is letting go. Being less stingy with things. Do not be afraid to take some, some financial risks here, especially with Pentacles, but in general, taking risks. Being open, putting your ideas out there. Card number three is the Hierophant, tradition. Sometimes means spirituality as well. What has been, what has always been, things passed down. Then we have the Page of Pentacles, exploring the material. Once again, you're being encouraged to try things in the material world. Explore in the material world. If it was a business venture, try it again. Pile number two. Things like that. And then you have Judgment reversed. Judgment is often about ascending to a, a higher plane, so to speak, of growth, is how I would like to summarize it. Reversed, it's asking for more of that, being willing to explore higher Planes, or it can also mean um, ascending to a higher growth level in your life is kind of how I would describe them. I'm actually going to put judgment up here because there's a little bit more room. So pile number two is, yes, I, I mean, you have what I call, and my uh, regular viewers are going to laugh because I always say this, you have what I call a hammer reading. And a hammer reading to me is when you have a similar message repeated like a hammer being beaten down on a nail. Like the star beings here are telling you, Take another risk. Do not be afraid to try that again. Be it a relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same relationship. Of course, you know what relationships were toxic to you. If you left them, you left them for a reason, right? Um, but people can change and grow. And or if you've been afraid to try new relationships after the last one failed, don't be afraid to try again. Pile number two. Same thing with, I think a lot of you, this is a career related thing, business venture. Do not be afraid to try again. Do not be afraid. Um, and the abundance of water is, is fascinating to me. Because in your tarot cards, you didn't get a lot of cups. And cups are the suit of water. You did get the Knight of Cups earlier, I believe, if I remember right. But you're lacking water. You're lacking emotion in your life. So to find that water, follow your passions, follow what gives you a spark, and you'll find your emotions again, and you won't be so dead inside pile number two. Also, I find it interesting that the idea of the magnetosphere and Aurora Borealis, and like I was saying earlier about why Mars is a dead planet technically compared to Earth, came up a lot. Um, because what I'm being told intuitively to say is to really point out, like I said, the reason why northern lights exist. They don't light up until there's friction between the particles of the universe hitting the Earth's magnetosphere. So you know what I'm saying? Friction, creating light. Metaphorically, that's them telling you, pile number twos, is you can't find that spark of light until you find some friction in your life. And I know that sounds weird, but like friction meaning trying that risk again, risking butting heads with something, risking stormy seas. Because that's where you're going to find a guiding North Star. That's where you're going to find that spark is is areas of friction. Um, a really good quote I, I from a song that I listen to a lot. Uh, I'll put it down in the description below for you, pile number two, so you can listen to it if you want. I believe it's called I Have Made Mistakes by the Oh Hellos. And there's a line that says, The sun, it does not cause us to grow. It is the rain that will strengthen our soul and make you whole. Uh, that's a really good quote that's coming to mind right now for me to you. So I'm going to put that down in the description. Listen to that song. Fantastic, beautiful song. Love the Oh Hellos. Yes. The sun does not cause us to grow. It is the rain that will strengthen your soul. Times of hardship. That's what makes you tough. That's what makes you strong. Like that card you got earlier, Strength from the Dream Ritual Oracle. Braving those stormy seas because that is what reveals your true metal. That is what reveals what really drives you pile. Number two is that is what makes your soul grow. Endurance is the key to success. Yep. And like Earth's magnetosphere, it's gone. It doesn't have that friction anymore and it's dead. 
Earth does. That's why we have northern lights, like I said. That friction creates light in the atmosphere. So that's what I'm being told. Look into that a little bit more too, pile number two. Maybe even look into astronomy and star seeds if you're not familiar with uh, the star seed concept. That might help you as well to surrender to complete healing. Um, a lot of beings like that are focused on healing and, of course, you know, guiding spiritually humanity. Yeah, do not be afraid to put things out there. And then, yeah, the Hierophant is like returning to what was, returning to tradition, what was before, what you've lost, going back to what it was. Exploring the material world with the Page of Pentacles. Taking action with your passions with the Knight of Wands. So pile number two is, as always, I hope that reading was helpful for you. Do not be afraid to try the same thing again. It won't always work out the same way. It'll probably be better this time is what I'm being told. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next reading pile number twos. Bye. Hello there, my lovely pile number threes. Welcome to your pick a card reading today on the topic of a secret message from a secret sender. As you recall, the card used to pick your pile was the heron or the crane in the marsh with embracing. It seems either at sunset or dawn. I would believe probably sunset because there's fireflies. Gorgeous card. We're going to set your pile leader over here to the left. And like I explained in the intro, we're going to have a grab bag as to who is reaching out to you today. So like I said, it could be Ascended Masters, Angels, Star Beings, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, things like that. I'm going to draw now. Universe Beings, for humanity's highest good. Who would like to come forward to speak to pile number threes today, please? Guide me to the right. Answer here. Right, this one. Okay. I'm going to set that over here, my meteorite bowl. So who wants to speak to you today, pile number threes? We have, all right, you're just like pile number twos. We have star beings. If you're not familiar with star beings, these are, a, if you're, okay, well, if you're familiar with the star seed system, that would be a good place to start. Uh, beings in the universe who are not, you know, human. Sometimes we would call them aliens. Um, higher dimensional beings that are more advanced than us in terms of spiritual growth that like to reach out and help humanity. So we'll see what comes forward. Uh, I know the, um, intuitively I felt it was uh, Andromeda and Pleiades that came forward for pile number two. I'll see what comes out maybe intuitively. Lyran from Lyra, or excuse me, Lyra, I should say, because the constellation is a lyre, like a, a harp kind of. Lyrans, I believe, is one. Lyrans. We'll see if any other come out. But um, I'm going to, like I said in the intro, draw your decks based on who came forward. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a lot of starseed-related decks. There just aren't a lot of them out there. Um, and then I'm also going to hold your paper down here with a sparkly nail file because pile number ones, I didn't do that. And whenever I shuffled the cards, the air just made the thing fly off. So yeah, like I said, I unfortunately don't have a lot of star related, uh, star being related decks, but we'll see what we can do. I'll probably use similar ones to pile number twos because you do have the same kind of beings reaching out to you. So I think I will use, and there we go. Even the nail file didn't help. Uh oh, there we go. We're going to Hold that down again. We're going to use the Shadowscapes Tarot. So that is a good one. Let's see. And then, yeah, definitely Surrender. Uh, Healing Spirits. Probably Hidden Worlds again. I might just use the same decks for you for that pile number two used pile number threes. Yeah, let's do that. So we have Elki. We have the Dream Ritual. We have Oracle Head of the Hidden Worlds. Healing Spirits. And we have the Power of Surrender cards. Okay. I believe that's right. So one, two, three, excuse me, one, two, three, and then two. Yes. Okay. Just making sure that the numbers are right. So let's draw the cards for you, pile number three. And if you like this format of reading, feel free to drop down a comment below. Say, hey, I really like this kind of open-ended thing. We'll see who comes through in different decks for each pile. If you don't like it, feel free to say that as well. Be like, go back to your regular thing. I don't want to watch you shuffle the cards. As always, my channel is collaborative. I don't want to always have the final say, or at least like the only say in things. So star beings, uh, Lyrans, and perhaps others that are coming forward for my lovely pile number threes, could you give me an oracle of the hidden worlds for them? What do you want to talk to them about today? Thank you. Uh, 
Um, also, if there's any, forgive me, people who are maybe more familiar with Starseed discussions, if there are any uh, star beings that are associated with the animal, like lions, that's also what's coming forward for me right now. I don't know if that's Lyrans or not. I'm not as familiar with the starseed system, so people who are more familiar with that, feel free to drop a comment down below. But lions, I'm hearing. I'll have to look that up. Maybe I'll put a thing in the description. But All right, and then we have the Dream Ritual Oracle. Same thing. Star beings coming forward for pile number threes. Yeah, Lyrans for sure, though. Thank you. One card for them. What do you want to talk to them about today? Thank you for their highest, best good. Also, if you like starseed readings in general, feel free to drop that down in the description, or excuse me, as a comment. I do not do a lot of starseed related readings, so... That has not been my path so far yet, but perhaps this is the beginning of that, so... Alright, same thing for my lovely pile number three is star beings coming forward for them. One, two, three, thank you. That one right there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. And then we're going to draw the cards for the second section of your reading. You, we won't talk about them quite yet. We have the power of surrender. Star beings for pile number three is could you give me a surrender card for them in the advice section of this reading after we discuss what you want to discuss with them? so to speak. Thank you. What advice would you have for them? What should they surrender? Okay, that one for sure. Thank you. Star beings for pile number threes. Put this over here. My leaning tower of decks over here. <laughs> I've used a lot of decks today because everyone's been different, so. And last but not least, we have the Healing Spirits Oracle. So, spirit beings for pile number three is same thing. This will be an advice card. What advice do you have for them in terms of what we're going to talk about to them today? Thank you. Okay, there we go. I believe that is it. Excuse as I adjust in my chair here, get a little bit taller. I'm a short person, so sometimes I have to sit on my legs <laughs> just to reach the desk right. And then we'll talk about these later. These are the advice cards. This will be the first section. And then star beings for pile number three is, would you give me five cards explaining more about what do you want to talk to them about? Thank you. What's the topic at hand? Two, three, four, and five. Get our ducks in a row. Let's reveal your oracle cards. What do they want to talk to you about today, pile number three? First up, we have the LP. We have Entrante, She Who Unfolds, Suave Embrace Self Care. Once again, and I told the other piles this today, pile number three, is there are a lot of birds. I don't know what's going on collectively with birds lately, but every single pile leader had a bird in it. Every single pile has had multiple cards with birds, and now you're showing that too. I believe that looks like a blue jay to me, but... But yeah, swath, embrace, excuse me, embrace self-care. Your healing, excuse me, dream ritual oracle, is barrier... A barrier of some sort blocking. Barrier to entry. Hmm, let's see what else pops up. I'll put that one over here. And then your Oracle of the Hidden Worlds is Fairy Energy. Growth, Expansion of Flowering. So once again, this is where I wish I had more Starseed related decks. Uh, this deck is more of a Fae related deck. Um, but it was the closest to Starseed that I had. So Fairy Energy, Growth, Expansion of Flowering. Especially we have a light coming down and growing things from the heart. Barrier self-care. Expansion of flowering. Embracing. Oh, you know, you got embracing twice. Look at this. You have embracing as your pile leader, and then Entrante had embrace as one of her keywords. Welcoming something. 
It's almost what I feel like the message is. Welcoming after a barrier. Oh, that's fascinating. And then let's reveal your tarot cards. We have first up the Page of Pentacles, exploring the material world, exploring a new job, exploring um, a new home, exploring a new area, exploring your body. Same thing, it could be self-care once again. We have the Two of Cups, harmony and relationships. Number three, we have the Empress reversed, a lack of nurturing. Uh, the feminine energy and the negative can mean smothering, lack of nurturing. Uh, you have a pretty clear message already popping out here, pile number threes, but we'll make sure we reveal everything before I say anything conclusive. We have the Three of Wands, taking action on plans towards the future. We've made our plans and we're embarking now. And last but not least, we have the Hierophant, tradition, what has always been. Okay, pile number threes. We have many shared keywords. We have embrace. We have a lot about growth. There's a lot here about rivers. Um, not only is you're embracing, uh, it's a marsh on a river. You also have a river in the Three of Wands. You also have a river in Barrier here. And there might be even a river in your fairy energy. Let's see. Uh, there might be a river in the background. However, it's hidden by a field, so I won't say that conclusively, but... Also about rivers, and rivers are all about going with the flow. Rivers also are barriers, specifically being made of water. Water in cardomancy is associated with emotions, so emotional barriers, I guess, is a better way to summarize that. Pile number three is, there's some area of your life where these star beings want to speak to you about you are being held back or holding yourself back is probably a better way to put that because you are putting up barriers with other people and barriers to yourself and i believe this is a common thing that has occurred in your life because you do have the hierophant that's the card of tradition it's something that maybe you have always done and the star beings are speaking to you today about letting go of the idea of having barriers. Well, not, of course, totally. We need to have barriers. We need to have lines in the sand that are drawn. We need to have boundaries. Yes, those are important things to have. But like all things in life, moderation is key. Sometimes we put up barriers so much that nothing can get through. Okay? And I feel like that's what's happening with you, pile number three. There is... A fear of being emotionally intimate, of being open with other people. There is a fear of being vulnerable here, I'm getting intuitively. And what the star beings want to speak to you about is, is like I said, finding balance in this area that brings in more opportunities for vulnerability, letting down some of the, the walls you put up with other people. Because it's going to lead you to a time of growth, especially with fairy energy. We talked about a flowering growth expansion, right? And it's also going to open up more opportunities in your life to connect to others more deeply and also to connect to yourself more deeply in terms of like self-care here with your entrante, right? So, uh, let's see if there's any other messages here about the situation at hand before I move to the advice section of your reading. Definitely, in it, especially with the Two of Cups here, Pile 3, is, there's a lot about it being involving other people. The Two of Cups is about harmony in relationships. I also feel like it blocks you from exploring more in the material world here with the Page of Pentacles. It blocks your ability to nurture yourself and others with the Empress reversed. And... There's a dichotomy or a struggle here between do I move forward into the future with the Three of Wands, because literally that's what it means, or do I stay stuck in the past with the Hierophant? Do I stay stuck where I am in terms of being less emotionally open with people, of having more barriers, or do I go forward in the future letting go and evaporating some of those barriers? Because even at the top here with barrier, it, the path eventually turns into butterflies, which means rebirth, transformation. And stepping into a new era of your life where your soul can grow even more because now you have more opportunities because of opening more vulnerability with other people 
to learn different lessons than where you are at right now. So that's how I would kind of summarize your reading so far, pile number three, is if I had to say in one sentence, it's embracing, nurturing, vulnerability, and self-care more with yourself and with other people in your life. That's what they want to talk to you about today. So you might have found that you do struggle with these things, pile number three. So I struggle with this myself, so I'm speaking kind of also from experience. I won't go too much into that because this is about you. But yes, letting go down walls. Because oftentimes, I have said this in other readings, we build up walls because there's something that we fear. We fear being taken advantage of. We fear being made fun of. We fear uh, coming off as weak. We fear... Now, what are some other fears? We fear a, lo a loss of control. That's another way um, to describe why we put up walls in our lives. Everybody puts up walls for different reasons, but those are just some of the few. So whatever it is for you, pile number three. So you're being encouraged by these star beings to perhaps, I mean, of course, we'll get to the advice section, but to perhaps consider letting go of some of those barriers Choosing to be three of wands, moving into the future, letting go a little bit of that hierophant energy of being stuck in the past so that you can find more harmony in your relationships with not only other people, but with yourself. And especially there's an emphasis here on nurturing, stepping more into feminine energy here of, yes, nurturing, like I said, ad nauseum, taking care of yourself, taking care of others. It doesn't have to be... The imagery I'm being told intuitively here is, especially focusing on your pile leader, it's a marsh, right? And what is the marsh but an area of our wildernesses that lacks a definable boundary? Because some parts of the marsh you have reeds and grasses or rice. Some parts of the marsh you have more water. Some parts it's a big soupy mix of both, right? Things not being so strictly bound being willing to open in and let that water in to uh, the drier land, so to speak, continuing with the metaphor of the marsh, the water being emotions and vulnerability and connection to others. Like what that means in tarot is the cups mean water, which means emotional vulnerability, connection with others, relationships, things like that. Okay, so let's move on to the advice section of your reading. But that's what they want to talk to you about today, these star beings, pile number threes. And like I said, I 100% get it. I have struggled with the same thing in my life. In fact, maybe that's why you were drawn to this reading, is because I always kind of believe that, you know, you're drawn to the tarot readers you're drawn to because there's some sort of similar soul circle, maybe a bit of a wider one than your typical one that you and I both belong to together, so. Okay. We have your two oracle cards we already drew earlier as the advice. I also want to draw some more tarot cards for this. So star beings for pile number three is with this emotional vulnerability, letting go of barriers and boundaries. Do you have five cards, please, that explain more advice on how they can do that? What would you recommend for them, please? Thank you. Five. Yep. So far, I'm only hearing Lyrans. I know I said that at the beginning. Uh, pile number two has had two different types of star beings that came forward, but Lyrans for you, pile number three, is, are the main ones. Okay. One, two, three. Let's see, four and that one for sure is also popping out five. Okay, let's reveal your oracle cards. Healing Spirits Oracle today is you have the power to make yourself better. Lovely. You have the power to make yourself better. I almost wonder if you believe it's an innate quality about yourself that you can't change. And what they're saying is that this is something you can change should you choose to. Letting in more people, letting in more vulnerability. We also have the power of surrender. Surrender, okay. Water again. A lot of piles have had water today. I don't know what it is. Water and birds, but remember what I just said? It's okay to be vulnerable, pile number three. It's okay to trust others. It's okay to let down barriers and walls. So I'll read this here. It says, surrender to trust. Trust yourself and your decisions. Don't be swayed by other people's strong opinions about what to do. Take action and be confident that you have chosen the right path. So this card is specifically more about trusting yourself. Like we do say, you know, with your hearing spirits, it said, you have the power to make yourself better. 
So it is about trusting yourself that you can grow past this time. But also it's about trusting other people intuitively, I'm being told. I don't know what broke your trust in the first place. Oftentimes, uh, at least from my personal experience, I can tell you what broke my trust was yeah, at least being willing to trust other people in the future was people in my past breaking my trust. I think that's the, the pretty universal human experience as to why we have trust issues is because other people have broken our trust, right? in the past. And, you know, our, our little monkey brains tell us, well, that thing hurt in the past. So I'm not going to do that again. I, or the example, I, I, at least when I was in therapy myself, that my therapist used was um, very simply like when you're a child, right? And you touch a hot stove. Why do you learn not to touch that? Again, at least is because it hurts, right? And we go, oh, that hurt. Ouchie. I'm not going to do that again. Well, that happens even with other things, you know, extrapolating it to a wider message here. Pile number three is Someone breaks your trust in the past, ouchie, that hurt, and then we have problems in the future doing that again. But what the spirit beings, or star beings, I should say, are saying to you is that it's okay to embrace letting go down your walls again. It's okay to welcome in more light, especially here with the imagery of the heart with the light shining through it. It's okay to welcome in more of that light, pile number three, is because, yes, I know it is very scary to trust again because we fear loss of control over... Uh, the effect people have on us. We fear being betrayed again. Um, but we also, if that happens, we lose out on some really good things that could happen. All right. So surrender to trust. You have the power to make yourself better. Let's look at your tarot cards here too. Eight of Pentacles reversed, asking for more hard work in a certain area or maybe not necessarily getting the work or the, I should say, the result out of things based on the work that you put in. Sometimes that's what that means. Card number two, the Ace of Cups reversed, feeling like there's a lack of new emotions, a lack of new emotional opportunities. Yep, that's kind of what we were talking about. Number three, we have the Hanged Man reversed, asking to look at things at a different perspective. Yep. You have what I, my viewers are going to know what this is. It's called a hammer reading. It's a similar message, hammered again like a hammer on a nail. We have the Queen of Pentacles, internal security. And uh, last but not least, we have the King of Pentacles reverse. We have the King as well as the Queen, but the King is reversed. That's about externally manifesting security instead of internally. So pile number three is in terms of, I'm actually going to set that one up here. In terms of advice for you, pile three is um, on breaking down these barriers, on being more open with people. Should you choose, of course, you have free will. No one's saying you have to do this, but... In, in terms of what's best for your growth, pile three, as these star beings are saying, yep, you have the power to make yourself better. You have the ability to overcome this. That's what this card is saying. But then also be willing to trust people again with surrender to trust. Be willing to embrace others. Also, with your messages of self-care earlier, with self-care, be willing to embrace yourself more. Because a lot of times when we hold back on opening up to others, it's also things that we're denying about ourselves, suppressing about ourselves. Does that kind of make sense, pile number threes? Um, looking at your tarot cards specifically, though, they're asking for you to put a little bit more work here with the Eight of Pentacles reversed, especially next to the Ace of Cups reversed. Put a little bit more work into inviting in new emotional opportunities. It could be going out more and seeking more friends. It could be going, uh, if it's dating maybe is where the trust issues are in your particular uh, instance, pile number three is be willing to maybe try dating again. Um, I'm not necessarily saying go out on dating apps because at least for a lot of us, dating apps kind of suck, but you know, maybe just going out and, and trying new hobbies or trying new social events here. Working a little bit more in that area to invite more of that in so you have more opportunities to let your barriers down and to let more people in, okay? Pile number threes. And be willing to look at things from a different perspective here, especially with the hangman reversed. That's asking for more objectivity, looking at things not just from your own lens, but from other people's lens. Ask other people in your life for advice in this area, pile threes. Perhaps part of that, too, is strengthening by giving by being willing to be vulnerable and saying to other people hey i'm struggling with this particular thing have you experienced this before or what what advice would you have for me that also strengthens your bond 
because not only are you asking them for advice, which makes people feel good. I mean, you might feel like a burden, but actually when people ask for advice, it usually makes the other person feel good because what it says to the other person is, I trust your opinion, right? Surrender to trust. Be willing to ask other people for help, Piles Reese. Be willing to trust in their advice. Be willing to say, hey, I have an issue or a thing that I'm kind of worried about or that I'm struggling with. What do you think? And that will also strengthen your relationships. Also, two, when we meet new people, say you go out there and you meet new people, Pile Threes, every single person we meet is a new perspective to see the universe from that is equally valid. Meeting people with different perspectives. Look outside of who you typically would look to make a friend with or get into a relationship with, depending on what area of your life you're kind of concerned about. It's going to be different for everybody as a general reading, but try being with people that you normally wouldn't be with. Different opinions, different beliefs, because a lot of times our best growth in terms of coming to the conclusions that we come to and being a well-rounded human being is being with other people that don't necessarily always agree with us, but finding harmony anyways. Also taking their objectivity, their ideas into account so that we can compare them with our own and come to even stronger conclusions in collectivity, I guess is a good way to put that pile three. So, I mean, to summarize that with all the without all the spiritual gobb gobbledygook I just said, <laughs> um, go out and meet people more. Work, work harder on being more social, inviting new emotions in, trying new things in that area. And then with the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles reversed, um, I almost feel like the star beings are saying, you already are on the way to internal security here. That's why the Queen of Pentacles is upright. So I feel like maybe you're starting to get to the cusp of being a little bit more secure with being vulnerable. Maybe with yourself is a good step to take, admitting to yourself where you're vulnerable or where you're having maybe trust issues. The first step to fixing a problem is admitting that we have one, right? And everyone has problems, so like I said, it's not, you know, people shaking a finger at you being like, you know, you're flawed, everybody's flawed, okay? Everybody has issues like this. Um, but by admitting it to ourselves internally, that's when we can start working on that King of Pentacles reversed and, and saying to ourselves, putting it out there into the aether, into the universe, okay, I admitted I have an issue, or I admitted that I want this thing, I want to manifest more, let's say, relationships in my life. Now I can work on the external manifestation of the king here. All right? So that's the first step for you, pile threes. Work on self-care, work on admitting things, vulnerability with yourselves, perhaps journal a little bit is something I'm being told expression in terms of art, expression in terms of music. Um, you know, a lot of the best music and art is derived from a place of sadness or vulnerability, because what is a piece of art or music but taking a piece of your soul and putting it out there, being vulnerable, mm -hmm, out to the world, and saying, here's this thing about me, I'm going to be honest about it. That's really what art is, is honesty of the soul. It's another way to put it. So look into maybe doing some art that expresses the way you feel, exploring that more. Uh, meditation, I always recommend in my readings ad nauseum. Meditation's great. You know, maybe even if you find it helpful for you, some people like therapy, some people don't. But if that's something you would consider, maybe work on therapy on with trust issues and opening up to new relationships would be a great idea, I think. Um, whatever it is, whatever path you take, take it towards expressing vulnerability and seeking new relationships, pile number threes, embracing and letting down boundaries, letting go of walls. Let's see if there's any other messages here before I sign off with you. And I'm going to tell you one thing I already told the other piles today. For some dang reason, there's a lot of water imagery in the cards today and birds. Um, I don't know, maybe... Depending on your preferences, you might find luck in exploring activities that involve water. So maybe for self-care, that would be baths, taking nice, luxurious baths if you can. Um, it could also mean hiking, nature activities out by water. It could be swimming. is great exercise for the body. That's very easy on the limbs, especially for those of us that suffer from, let's say, like arthritis is a good example. Water. 
Do activities by water. That's a that's a hint to you from the star beings. They said that with some other piles today too, so. All right, well, pile number three is, as always, I hope that reading was helpful for you. You know, seek vulnerability, seek openness and honesty, seek relationships. That's your main piece of advice for today. Um, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next reading. Bye.